Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to use OpenCV for human or pedestrian detection using a simple algorithm and push an event to cloud using MQTT protocol. So let's get started. To begin with, we are going to use HRG feature descriptor or histogram of oriented gradients. It's a feature descriptor that's often used to extract features from an image data. This is exclusively used in computer vision for object detection. So there are a lot of other edge detection algorithms, why specifically HOG? Like the main advantage would be HOG is, you know, an edge detection algorithm, but along with that, it does extract gradients and orientation, or you can say the magnitude and direction of the edges. So thereby giving you an ability to even detect the orientation of the image. Moving on to the next statement, we have something called a set SVM detector. So SVM stands for support vector machine is one of the most popular supervised learning algorithm, which is used for classification as well as regression problem. I mean, but the primary use case would be for classification problems in machine learning. We have a built in method for people detector and uh, we're going to use that in HRG descriptor. Moving forward, we see a couple of lines for the MQTT client setup. I'll get back to this once we get to the point of the MQTT data push. And uh, finally, we got our detect method. Here you can see all I'm going to do is open a video capture and zero. This could be the first webcam or any other imaging device you have. I'm going to skip most of this. Um, here we are reading the frame, I mean reading the uh, the video stream and dumping it into the frame and then I'm going to pass it to my detect method. In the detect method again you can you come across the detect multi-scale. This is the very important method when it comes to the action analysis. The detect multi-scale let us analyze the image and know if a person exists using this classification results from our SPM. So let's now uh, dig deep into the parameters. So the frame is nothing but your actual video stream. The scale or you can see the scale factor specifies how much the image size is reduced with each scale. In a group photo there may be some faces which are near the camera than the others naturally such faces would appear more prominent than the ones behind. This factor compensates for that. The next two parameters, wind stride and scale, I feel these are very important parameters uh, and need to be set properly, even though they are mentioned as optional. You know, these parameters, they not just, you know, um, dictate the accuracy of your detector, but also the speed at which the detector runs. Uh, for example, based on your wind stride parameter, uh, if you try to reduce this, you will see a sluggish or a laggy output. To, and uh, it provided you have a very good graphics engine. So wind stride, uh, you know, it, it's a tutorial that dictates the step size in both the X and Y location of the sliding window. In context of object detection, you know, the sliding window is, uh, you can imagine as a rectangular region of uh, kind of a, like a fixed height and width which slides along the images for example if you take this cursor uh, imagine it as a rectangle box so when you execute this multi-scale and it will glance in horizontal and once it reaches the end it would then jump to the next line and that's how the whole scanning of image would go through and finally, moving to the, uh, the next slide, we're going to initialize the person with one. Uh, this is just to avoid any negative numbers later. The output of the detect model scale is x, y, w, and h, where x, y is coordinates and w is width and height. So we are going to check if the detect multi scale actually output a valid number, uh, valid value, and then what we're going to do is that we are going to uh, create a rectangle around it just to show like uh, where exactly a person uh, is located in the frame and uh, next we are going to even uh, place a text 
uh, against that rectangle uh, just to show the uh, the person ID like for example if we did a uh, two person so we will show like person one against one frame and person two against the second frame so uh, how it works is that uh, we are going to increment the person based on the valid values so if you if, for example uh, direct multi scales has detected multiple um, you know, objects in the frame then you find a valid x y and w so this would loop till you till it reaches the uh, you know the non-valid or null variable and uh, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to push this to the cloud uh, before I explain more about MQTT let me just uh, you know jump to the next line and uh, here what we're doing is that uh, at the top right oh, sorry the top left we are going to create a box and put a string on it uh, saying the total persons yes detected so it's not like uh, here where it will show you know a box against the person uh, with the ID on it but this will show on, uh, the total persons on the frame and uh, finally I'm, this is where the actual frame is shown and uh, we're going to return the frame back to the you know the calling function here we, we would not really need it for but in case you're based on application you can do more post processing out of it Okay, getting back to the calling function. Okay, I think I did a mistake here. This should not be needed since I'm using the, uh, you know, the keyboard library. So I'm basically pulling for the uh, Q button pressed on the keyboard, and as soon as I'm pre I'm, I have pressed a Q, so that's a small letter Q, I would exit out of the code. Uh, sorry, exit out of the loop, and uh, this would, you know, clear any memory that's allocated for the video stream, and uh, along with that, destroy all or again uh, clear all the memory allocated for the windows and uh, that's it this should end the whole code okay now let me get back to MQTT so MQTT operates at the same layer as HTTP but MQTT is designed for pushing small amount of data uh, and hence it has a very low footprint and can be ported even to a microcontroller with 2 KB of RAM so here um, how MQTT operates is that you would have a client and a broker. So broker is more like a server, which is, uh, I mean, you, you can deploy it anywhere, even on a mobile phone. And uh, this is my uh, broker broker address. I'm using a uh, free MQTT um, you know, um, website, but they do have a paid option as well. And client is me. Basically, I'm assigning a client ID. So every client should have a unique ID. So um, if you're trying to communicate with a broker but with two devices and both of them have the same ID, then that would cause a conflict. So um, I'm, I'm just uh, you know giving a random ID for this. And um, MQTD op has, again, concept of username and password. Um, at times, I mean, a certain brokers would just work without username and password but since you have a, a unique client id but certain brokers do expect you to even communicate with username and password so uh, at this broker that m uh, i cannot pronounce this so m i q i a t d o they assign a username and password so you should be using the same to communicate with that broker and finally i am establishing a connection and uh, that should do it um, as soon as the connection is established, then I can go ahead and publish my data. So, thing is that every MQTT has something called as a topic. So, um, you can consider this as more like a web link, but more dedicated towards like, a, you know, a stream or a port, like if you take in case of uh, socket communication. So, um, multiple devices can kind of like subscribe to the same topic and here what I'm doing is that at the broker end I have uh, created a topic called test and I'm subscribed to it so now I can publish to that topic and at the broker end it can receive data at that topic so what I'm going to do next is that uh, I'm going to execute this uh, Python script and at the same time open the uh, MAQIFTTO uh, you know the broker and show the data being pushed from the my my python script to the cloud okay 
Uh, on the left, I have opened the web client of my broker and the username is the same which I have provided here. So let me quickly copy paste of that. So this can be anything. Let me go ahead and connect. So the connection is established. So the topic which I have to subscribe is the same which I mentioned. So that test. And now I'm subscribed to the topic. And the next step would be to go ahead and execute the Python script. And as soon as it detects a human or a pedestrian, it's going to parallelly publish the total persons detected to the server. So I'm going to open a sample image and I'm going to point my webcam at it. As you can see, I have loaded a sample pedestrian image here. So let me go ahead and navigate using pseudo and the keyboard of oh, plugin needs pseudo perlet so yes and as you can see you know it is detecting the pedestrians at the same time it's pushing the data to the cloud in real time so this is just sample applications but you can modify as per your requirement but the application is limitless so that's all that i had to show in this demo please do like and subscribe and watch more videos like this thank you